we need to determine all the branch currents using mesh analysis. This circuit has two voltage sources, and that's it. No current sources, no dependent sources, and no tricky super meshes. So if you're new to mesh analysis, this is a great beginner-friendly example to work through. We'll walk through the entire process in eight simple steps. Our mission is straightforward. Apply Kirchhoff's voltage law to each loop or mesh and solve for the current flowing in each one. That's it. Time to roll up your sleeves and jump into the loops. Mesh analysis might sound a bit intimidating at first, but once you see it broken down, it's really just like following a recipe, only for circuits. And hey, if you want a full deep dive, I've linked our complete mesh analysis video in the description below. In Let's walk through the steps we've learned. First up, label the voltage across each component. The voltage sources are already labeled, so we'll label the voltages across the resistors as V1, V2, and V3. That wraps up step one. Moving on to step two, identify the meshes and assign current directions. Remember, meshes are the smallest loops in the circuit, and in this case, we've got two of them. Each one will get its own KVL equation. Now it's time to assign mesh current directions. While the direction is totally up to us, I'll go with the standard clockwise direction for both. It's consistent, neat, and makes the math a whole lot easier later on. Now it's time to label the current directions for the power sources. For voltage sources, current always flows out from the positive terminal. And just for reference, if we had current sources, we'd simply follow the direction of the arrow. But in this circuit, we're only dealing with voltage sources, so I've labeled the currents flowing outward from their positive sides. Simple, clear, and ready for the next step. Now let's identify the voltage rises and drops based on our mesh current directions. For power sources, here's the rule. If the current flows with the mesh current, it's a voltage rise. If it flows against it, it's a voltage drop. Resistors, on the other hand, are always voltage drops, no exceptions. Starting with mesh 1, the current through the voltage source flows in the same direction as the assigned mesh current, so that's a voltage rise. The resistors, as always, cause voltage drops. Mesh 2 follows the same pattern. The mesh current aligns with the voltage source direction, making it another rise. And again, all resistor voltages are drops. This step is absolutely crucial. If you mix up a rise and a drop, your entire equation will be off, and you won't land on the correct answers. So take your time here and double-check those directions before moving on. Now we're ready to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, starting with mesh one. As we loop around, we see a voltage rise of 42 volts from the source and two voltage drops across the resistors, V1 and V3. So the equation becomes 42 volts equals V1 plus V3. Now on to mesh 2. Here we have a 10 volt voltage rise from the second source and again, two resistor drops, V2 and V3. So our second equation is 10 volts equals V2 plus V3. And there we go, two clean KVL equations, one for each mesh. These are the foundation for solving the rest of the problem, so keep them neat and accurate. Now it's time to express the resistor voltages using Ohm's law, V equals IR. This step is usually straightforward, unless you're dealing with shared resistors between two meshes. In that case, you have to use the difference between the two mesh currents, and here's the key. Always put the current from the mesh you're analyzing first in the subtraction. So starting with mesh 1, V1 becomes I1 times 6 ohms. Nice and simple. But V3 is across a resistor shared with mesh 2. So we write it as I1 minus I 2 times the resistor value. Always put the current from the mesh you're analyzing first. Now we can simplify the equation like this. Moving on to mesh 2, the process is the same. V2 is simply I2 times 4 ohms straightforward enough. But when it comes to V3, the shared resistor, 
we can't just reuse the expression from mesh 1. Since we're now working in mesh 2, we need to flip the order in the subtraction. V3 becomes I2 minus I1 times the resistance. That switch is essential because it reflects the perspective of the mesh we're analyzing. Now we can simplify the equations using the expressions we just plugged in. And just like that, we've wrapped up step six. Paying close attention to current direction in shared components might seem like a small detail, but it's a deal breaker for getting the right answers. Step seven, make sure you've got enough equations to solve for all your unknowns. In this case, we're solving for I1 and I2. Two unknowns. Let's count the equations. We've got one from mesh one and one from mesh two. That's two equations. Perfect match. The number of equations equals the number of unknowns. So we've got everything we need to move on. If we were missing an equation, we'd have to look for extra relationships, like dependent sources or current constraints. But here we're good to go. Time to solve. Finally, it's time to solve the simultaneous equations and find the mesh currents. We'll start by eliminating I1 from both equations to isolate and solve for I2. After a bit of algebra, substituting and simplifying, we find that I2 comes out to be 4 amperes. That's one mesh current down. Once we have I2, we can plug it back into either equation to find I1 and complete the solution. Now let's wrap it up by substituting the I2 value into equation 1. Plugging in I2 is 4, and solving the equation gives us I1 is 6 amperes. And there we have it, both mesh currents found. I1 is 6 amperes, and I2 is 4 amperes. Once you've labeled the voltage rises and drops correctly and written your KVL equations carefully, mesh analysis becomes a piece of cake. It's all about being methodical. Follow the steps, respect the direction of currents, and apply the laws consistently. When you do that, even the most complex circuits start to look simple. It's like solving a puzzle with the answers hiding in plain sight. You just need the right moves to reveal them.